Greetings to you. I am Minister Louis Farrakhan, National Representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that great preacher of freedom, justice, and equality to the black man and woman of America and the Western Hemisphere, and to the aboriginal people of the earth, the eternal leader of the nation of Islam and a warner to the government and people of the United States of America and a warner to the nations of the earth. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad started learning and teaching of this great wheel called the Mother Plane around 1932. Ten years later, in 1942, after the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, the temple, as it was called at that time, was raided by law enforcement officials under the guidance of the FBI. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's home was also raided and the teachings that Master Farad Muhammad had left with him were taken from the home and the temple. Later, he was questioned by the FBI on the drawing of the wheel and his writing about it that they had taken from the temple, and he explained to the government of the United States and to the FBI its aim and purpose, who made it and why it is now above America. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it was a masterpiece of mechanics and engineering and that nothing like this has ever been seen before. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it is the greatest military weapon ever developed in the annals of the history of Allah, God, and man in this universe. He said that the vision of this wheel was seen thousands of years before it came into being or became a reality. He said that this weapon was made for the purpose of destroying this present world in the final battle with the forces of evil that had ruled our present world. Some of the prophets were given the ability to envision it and were terrified and overcome by the majesty of such a dreadful weapon that was the greatest mechanical object ever made. A masterpiece developed by the master to assert his mastery that he had come to set down the tyrants that had ruled humanity for 6,000 years and to set justice in the earth, and to set up a kingdom of peace on this earth that would never be destroyed. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that this great wheel was made for military purposes, for it was to engage in the great battle in the sky that would end this world and usher in that world that the prophets exclaimed would come at the end of the 6,000 year rule of the enemy of Allah God and the enemy of the aboriginal people of the earth. Moses was guided and protected by this cloud that was a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day, but no such wheel was in existence in the time of Moses. So what we read of Moses and this cloud and fire and light coming from this cloud to part the Red Sea and destroy Pharaoh's army did not happen like that 4,000 years ago. But that was a prophetic, symbolic picture of the end of this world and the destruction of the armies of this world and the power that holds sway over the people. Again, 
this wheel that is sometimes called a chariot came down and picked Elijah up. That did not happen with Elijah the prophet, but Elijah in the book of Kings was a sign of the Elijah that would come at the end of this present world. So there was the chariot that picked up Elijah and the cloud and the pillar that guarded and protected Moses and the vision of Ezekiel of a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night that was so dreadful that he cried out in exclamation, O wheel, O wheel. And the last person or prophet that a cloud or wheel is mentioned with is Jesus, but not the historical Jesus. Some of the disciples saw Jesus going away in a cloud or a wheel like plane. And it is written that the same Jesus that was seen going away in this manner will come back in like manner in the clouds of heaven. Well, men don't move about on clouds except in planes. And this plane, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us, is made like a wheel. Not that it is a wheel, but it is made like a wheel, circular in motion, circular in make. So we have Jesus, Moses, Elijah, and Ezekiel. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, in an August 24th, 1973 article in the Muhammad Speaks newspaper writes, quote, It has been over 2,000 years since the revelation of the book entitled Ezekiel. The Bible scholars are a little confused over an exact date of Ezekiel's vision of the wheel. Some of the Bible scholars are actually doubtful as to whether or not there was an Ezekiel living or not. They arrive at their various conclusions concerning the book of Ezekiel and whether or not he was a living prophet or whether the book of Ezekiel is a vision of a prophet or not because of the style of the writing of the book. Ezekiel is called a priest in the first chapter, the third verse of Ezekiel in the Bible. One of the definitions of a priest is a descendant of the family of Aaron. Aaron was a type of the priesthood of Melchizedek, who was an eternal priest with no beginning of days or ending of years. Now let us look at this wheel. Since it really wasn't in existence during the time of Moses who lived 4,000 years ago, it wasn't in existence in the time of Elijah in the ninth century before Christ. And it did not exist during the time of this one named Ezekiel and it was not in existence during the time of Jesus the prophet but it would become a reality in the time of the one that Jesus prophesied would come after him in the last days of this present world. Let's look at the book of Luke, the ninth chapter, the 28th to the 36th verse. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor talking with Jesus. They spoke 
about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters or tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, whom I have chosen. In him I am well pleased. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. No Elijah, no Moses. The disciples kept this to themselves and did not tell anyone at that time what they had seen. This episode is called Jesus' Transfiguration on the Mount. What is the definition of transfiguration? It means a complete change of form or appearance into a more beautiful or spiritual state. Trans, the prefix means across, beyond, or through. Elijah and Moses prefigured not the prophet Jesus, but the great Messiah Jesus who would come at the end of this present world. And the wheel would be with him. And this Jesus that is seen at the end of the present world is referred to in the language of the Son of Man. This transfiguration means that the figure of God came across the person and character of Jesus so that God was sending himself through Jesus to the world. So this is the meaning of Messiah. It means a man in whom is the indwelling spirit of God himself. Who is this son of man? This son is born out of the longing of the original family to deliver them because all members of the original family have longed to be relieved from the oppressive hand of this new people who were made to rule that have come on our planet. Ezekiel in the Bible is also referred to as a son of man. So if there's a question as to whether Ezekiel 595 years before the prophet Jesus lived, yet there had to be a man that had a vision of this wheel, but he was not the reality of the fulfillment of it. That would come at the end of this present world. The son of man. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that this son of man represents the coming of God in person. But he's coming out of the direction of the east and he is journeying toward the west. Why should he come toward the west? Because it is in the west that the lost sheep or the people of Allah God would be that had to be delivered from a modern Pharaoh, a modern oppressor, 
and the one that would come up from them is the Jesus that the Jesus of 2,000 years ago prophesied of that would come in his name at the end of the present world. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says this great masterpiece of science and engineering and technology that the scientists of this world say that the technology that they have seen demonstrated in these wheels is millions of years ahead of themselves and what they know. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the wheel was made on the island of Nippon that is now called Japan. He said some of the finest brains of the original people were used in making this greatest object of military science. And this wheel, as it rose up from the earth, it came following the Son of Man from the east, now even unto the west, and this great wheel is sitting up above the United States of America, 40 miles out of the Earth's atmosphere in space. So the mountain that all these prophets went up into to get up to the wheel, it represents a powerful nation where the science and wisdom of that nation makes it the pride of the nations of the earth like a great mountain and above America is the presence of that great wheel, that great mother plane. I would like to discuss at this point the two natures of that great wheel or mother plane. Nature is defined as the basic or inherent features of something. You know, when Moses said to Pharaoh, I present before you this day two signs, one of life, one of death one of blessing and one of cursing, and he gave the people of Pharaoh and Pharaoh the chance to choose between life or death. And Moses encouraged Pharaoh to choose life that you and your seed may live. So it is with that wheel that is above our heads. When you understand the two natures of that wheel, then the government and people of America and the people of the earth have to choose now between life and death, between blessing or cursing. So it was with Elijah. So it was with Jesus the prophet. Every time these men came, the kings and rulers and the people of that day had a choice to make between life and death. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that Jesus was the last prophet to the Jews. He offered them life and he warned them of the end of their civilization. Unfortunately, they rejected him and sought his death. So today, in the time of the presence of the great Messiah, you are offered again the choice between life and death, between blessing and cursing. But first, I will deal with that nature of the wheel that brings death and absolute destruction. A destruction so terrible 
that it is written in the Bible that behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven and all the wicked and the proud will be dealt with and they will be as stubble and God will root them out and leave them neither root nor branch. So terrible would his destruction be and America would be like an oven. I'll talk about that oven at another time, but suffice it to say, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the wheel was made for the purpose of the destruction of this present world. The armies of the world, the rulers of the world, the people that go along with wickedness in the world, that's death. The wheel comes in the time of Elijah, in the time of a great and dreadful day, a day with two different dispositions. In the book of Malachi, meaning my messenger, it reads, behold, before that great and dreadful day of the Lord, I will send you Elijah the prophet. And he will turn the hearts of the children to their fathers and their father's heart toward the children, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. A God with powers is present that can give you life in abundance or bring about complete death and total destruction. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, in a May 25th, 1973 article in the Muhammad Speaks newspaper entitled Ezekiel's Wheel, the Mother Plane, the Battle in the Sky, he writes, quote, the Bible, and Holy Quran. Both books refer to the final war between God and the devil that would be decided in the sky. The Caucasian people were given the authority and power and 6,000 years to rule us, the black nation of the earth. But at the end of 6,000 years, there would be a great time of trouble and a great display of the signs of this final war between God and the enemy of God, the devil. These signs would serve as a warning to us and what we may expect. And as we see today, these signs are coming to pass. And all of the other signs and prophecies of such signs appearing just around that time of the ending and destruction of the world of evil and the enemy of God and the displaying of these signs. As Jesus mentioned, some in the heavens and some of these signs on the earth and the preparation to be made for a final battle between God and Satan and his minions. The enemy has conquered both land and sea travel. The sea used to serve as a barrier against him, but now the enemy has conquered the sea. The enemy now can go over the surface of the sea in the worst of storms and he can go through her with under surfacing boats as well that you call submarines. And now the Caucasian has cast his eyes into space, to the sky, to conquer it. And he is doing that. The enemy 
having knowledge of what they may expect today, are spending billions of dollars on space travel. He has now brought the moon to him and has seen some of the stars. But the main thing I guess you are thinking is, can he win against Allah God? If Allah God and his prophets have foretold the outcome of this battle of the sky. It is impossible for the enemy to win. What makes it impossible for them to win is because they have not the power of the forces of nature. While the power of the forces of nature is in the hand of Allah, making it impossible possible for the enemy Satan, the devil, the wicked to win in a war of this sort. No, the enemy cannot win against Allah God on earth. So why waste billions of dollars to fight against the God who has power over the heavens and the earth? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad continues in his writings and he asks the question, why all of this hurry to try to ascend into the heavens for a close-up peek into the planets when you are destined to be defeated? Both books, Bible and Holy Quran, prophesy of a great defeat for you. The Holy Quran refers to the heavens as being a guarded canopy and warns you that they have a flame waiting for you. In the Holy Quran, chapter 72, verses 8 and 9, it reads, And we sought to reach heaven, but we found it filled with strong gods and flames. And we used to sit in some of the sitting places thereof to steal a hearing. But he who tries to listen now finds a flame lying in wait for him. Now this is directed to the National Security Agency of the United States government that has developed a way of listening in on everyone and everything. The universal snooper as Almighty God Allah through the Honorable Elijah Muhammad calls him. But oh, NSA, you're trying to get a hearing on that uh, exalted assembly. (laughs) But you find waiting for you a flame. 